Well, good morning and, and welcome to another week of Matt's Musings and the second part of a three-week foray into the Feasts of Israel, or perhaps more correctly, the Feasts of Yahweh. So today we're looking at Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks in Hebrew, or Pentecost in the Christian calendar. And this turns out to be a, a big subject and it actually needs a couple of section, sessions to, for us to do it any kind of justice. So we'll be carrying on tomorrow. So shall we start with a reminder of where in the Bible these feasts are announced? Now I'm hoping that you will look up the scriptures that I'm about to show you and not skate past them. So here they are. Now, as usual, we have to revisit the old before we can really unpack the new. This is pretty much a rule across the board in all seven of the festivals. So Shavuot simply means weeks, named because it falls seven weeks plus a day after Passover, generally in late spring. So its purpose was partly thanksgiving for the end of the early barley harvest that started three days after Passover, the feast of first fruits, when the very first sheaves were cut. Now it's the last sheaves that are celebrated seven weeks later. And if you're wondering how you get a harvest in springtime, well, they squeeze two harvests in per year. So the purpose of this feast was more than thanksgiving it commemorated the giving of the law at sinai and one of its more striking features was its inclusivity where uh, it stretched beyond the immediate family to strangers in their neighborhood to orphans and widows and and even servants and it involves a free will offering but in the fateful year when jesus died and rose the feast took on harmonic resonances that shook the world and still shake it today. I'd like to remind you of something that Messiah Jesus said to his disciples. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I've said to you. It's John 14, 26. Now, the word for teaching in Hebrew is Torah, or Torah, if you want to pronounce it the Hebrew way. And it's usually translated law in the New Testament, but primarily it means teaching, much as one teaches children, but necessarily with some rule setting that needs to be absolute. Now, therefore, is it coincidence that Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will teach his disciples everything. No, it actually makes complete sense that the Father would send the Holy Spirit upon his people on that exact day. As, and because as Jews, they would normally be celebrating the Torah on that day. And the crucial lesson is that the Spirit did not displace the word. He never does. So the Holy Spirit highlights the word, bigs it up, reinforces it, opens it wide. So here's the musing. Is the Holy Spirit leading you deeper into God's word? God's word and his spirit will never be divorced and we should never try. Grace and peace to you.